You are welcome to my channel today. If this is your first time of joining me in this YouTube channel, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So, in this presentation, I'll be examining the meaning of bills of exchange, parties to bills, types of bills, benefits or advantages of bills of exchange. I will also give the accounting entry. And I will also use an examination question to explain it. So, before I give you the definition of bills of exchange, I want to know that a bill of exchange is one of the negotiable instruments. Bills of exchange or bill of exchange is one of the negotiable instruments. Whereby Mr. A, Mr. A, Mr. A, says to Mr. B, Mr. B on credit. A says to B on credit. That means Mr. B is a debtor, while Mr. A is the creditor. Mr. A draw a B. He writes a B. He draw a B. On Mr. B. That Mr. B, please pay the money you are owing me at this so and so time. And Mr. B, upon the receipt of the bills, he writes the word accepted across the face of the bills. And he appends his signature on the bills. Then the bills become a legal proof of the debt. So that is bills of exchange. That means this person is the creditor. He is the one that writes the bill. The person who writes the bills is called the drawer. While the person on whom the bill is written is called the drawee. The drawer writes the bills on the drawee. Is writing the drawee to pay the amount owing to him or the person nominated by him at a particular time. That arrangement is what we call bills of exchange. What is bills of exchange? According to Bills of Exchange Act 1990, a bill of exchange is an unconditional order. In writing, an unconditional order in writing addressed by one person to another. I've told you that the drawer will write the bills to the drawee, addressed by one person to another, signed by the person given it, requiring the person to whom it is addressed. To pay on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time, a sum certain in money to or to the other of a specified person or to the bearer. A bit of exchange is an unconditional order in writing addressed by one person to another, signed by the person given it. Requiring the person to whom it is addressed to pay on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time is some certain in money to or to the other of a specified person or to the bearer. That is the definition of this of exchange according to this of exchange at 1990. I've told you that the drawer writes a bill on the drawee. The drawer, Mr. A, he writes a bill on the drawees, Mr. B, instructing Mr. B to pay the amount owed at a fixed or determinable future time to him or to the other of a specified person. That is bills of exchange. 
So, Mr. A, who writes the bids? You know, Mr. A is the seller or the suppliers. Mr. A, who writes the bids, is said to be the drawer. The drawer, parties to bids, parties to bids of exchange. There are three parties to bids. Number one, we have the drawers. The drawer is the suppliers. The drawer is the seller. A person, I mean, the drawer is the person who writes the bill. He who writes the bill is the drawer. In this case, Mr. A is the drawer. Number two, we have the drawee. The drawee. Drawee is the debtor. Is the customer or the debtor to whom the bill is written. A person to whom the bills is written is said to be the drawee. The drawee is the debtor. Number three, we have the payee. The payee. The payee is the person to whom mon the money is to be paid. The person to whom the money is to be paid. The person to whom the bills is payable. The drawer may be the payee or it may be the top party, maybe the bank or the discount house. So that may be the payee. Types of bills. Number one, we have the inland bills. Inland bills or inland bills. Inland bill is the bill of exchange, draw and payable in the same country. The bills of exchange draw and payable in the same country is said to be an inland bills. If a bills is drawn in Nigeria and that bills is also payable in Nigeria, that bills is said to be an inland bills. And if a bill is drawn in US and that bills is payable in US to them, that bills is said to be an inland bills. Number two. We have foreign bills. Foreign bills. A foreign bill is a piece of edge draw in a country and payable in another country. A piece of edge draw in a country and payable in another country. If a piece of edge you draw in Nigeria and it is payable in UK, such bills is said to be a foreign bill. It is draw in Nigeria and payable in UK. If it is draw in Nigeria and payable in Ghana, such bills is said to be a foreign bill. Number three, we have accommodation bills. Accommodation bill. Accommodation bill is the bill of exchange accepted by a person known as the accommodation party. Not for a valuable consideration. But with the intention of lending his name or reputation to use by that person. A piece of agent draw and accepted by a person, not for a valuable consideration, but with the intention of lending his name or reputation to another person. I repeat. An accommodation bill is a bill of exchange draw and accepted by a person not for a valuable consideration but with the intention of lending his name or reputation to another person. What are the benefits or advantages of bills of exchange? Benefits or advantages Advantages of bills of exchange. Bills of exchange allows the debtors to postpone payment to a later date. It allows it allows the debtor to postpone payment. To 
a letter date. It allows the debtor to postpone payment to a later date. Number two, it enables it enables the creditor to receive money immediately, despite the fact that the debtor is here to pay. It enables the creditor. It enables the creditor to receive money immediately immediately despite the fact that the creditor uh, the debtor is yet to pay number 3 Bills of exchange is a proof of indebtedness. It's a proof of indebtedness of the debtors to the creditor. It is a proof of the indebtedness of the debtor to the creditors. The proof of the indebtedness, indebtedness of the debtor to the creditors. Processes. Processes involved in bills of exchange in the books of the drawers. I've told you that the drawer is the seller, that is, the creditor. Number one, the supplier sells goods on credit, sold goods on credit to the debtors. Where goods are sold on credit, so the debtor, or has it paid for the goods? In this case, the customer or debtors is the receiver. So we debit the debtors account or the receivables account and we credit sales. So the drawer, the seller, will now write a bill on the debtors. Drawing, drawing bills. That is the suppliers. We draw a bill on the debtors, requesting the debtors or the, uh, the customer to pay the amount owed. When the customer receives the bill, the customer will accept it by appending his signature on the bill and also write the word accepted across the face of the bill. In that case, the bills become a legal proof of the indebtedness of the debtors to the creditors. So, say these bills have been accepted by the drawees, that is by the debtors. It has been accepted by the drawees, that is the debtors. I said the bills become a legal proof of the debtors. There are three options opening to the drawers. I'm told that the drawers is the supplier, the seller. There are three options opening to the seller or to the supplier. Number one option is to wait till the maturity date. To wait till the maturity date and receive and receive the money. At the majority date, the debtors will be expected to pay. So, the drawer, that is the seller, may decide to wait till the majority date of the bills when the debtor will actually pay the sum owed. The second option is that where the drawer 
where the seller is in need of the money immediately, where they are in need of the money urgently, he may not be able to wait till the said date, that is till the maturity date. So he may take the bills to the bank or discount house and discount the bills. So the bills will be discounted. Discount the bills. The bills. Wait the bank. Bank or discount house. What do we mean by discounting the bills? Meaning that the seller will tender the bills to the bank. If the sum is one million dollar, the bank might agree to give the seller the sum of nine hundred thousand dollar in place of one million. Meaning that the seller tenders the bills to the bank and agree to collect a lesser amount. That is the amount that is less than the face value of the bills. So that process is, is what we call discounting of the bills. So the bills is tendered to the bank or discount house. The discount house will not pay that person, will pay the drawer the sum that is less than the face value of the bills. So paying $900,000 in place of $1 million. That means they have reduced the sum by 100000 That 100000 which by which they have used to reduce the face value of the bills, is what we call discount charge. We call it discount charge. So, the third option, if the seller doesn't want to discount the bills, and the seller does not want to wait in the maturity and collect the face value of the bills, it is possible the seller might be owing another top party. So, he might decide to endorse that bill. Endorse the bills to the third party. Meaning that, meaning that if the drawer is owing someone, he might decide to use that bill to settle the sum he himself is owing. He used the bills. No, another person is owing him. And he too is owing another person. He now used that bill to settle his or her indebtedness with the top party. That process is, is what we call endorsing the bills. Now, having examined the, the processes involved in bills of LK, we therefore want to examine the accounting entries in the books of the drawers. Accounting entries in the books of the drawers. Everything, accounting, everything is done in line with the principles of double entry. Accounting entries in the books of the drawers. Drawer. Remember, I told you that drawer is the seller or the supplier. So, how do you pass the necessary accounts in the books of the seller? The first thing, there is a transaction between the suppliers and their customers on credit. So, we have sold goods on credit to a customer. So, where he sold goods? Customer becomes the receiver. Why says is the giver? Remember the double entry principles. We debit the receiver and credit the giver. The left hand side of an account is called the debit side, while the right hand side is called the credit side. So in this case, where goods are sold on credit, sales account will be credited. Sales is the giver. Why customer? That is, customer is the receivable. You can call it receivable account, or you call it debtors account. Customers is the debtors. It's also the receivable. In this case, we debit receivables account or debtors account. Debit the debtors account. Debit the debtors account. And you credit sales account. 
you credit says I can. Sales is the giver. So, and customer is the receiver. No customer's account is the debtor's account or receivables. Or you can still call them, call it customer account. Number two, these goods have been sold on credit by the drawer, by the seller to the customer. The seller will now write a bill on the customer, instructing the customer to pay the amount owed at a certain time. It might be immediately or in future. So, once the person receives the bills, the person will now append his signature and write the word accepted across the face of the bills. Then the bills become a legal proof. A bill of exchange accepted by debtor. A bill of exchange accepted by a debtor. I told you that goods have been sold. After goods have been sold or credited to the debtors, then the creditor has now drawn a B, that is the drawer, which is the seller, has drawn a B, instructing the debtors to pay the money owed at a determinable future time. Once the debtor has accepted the bill, his debt has been discharged. In this case, you know the debtor's account has been debited when goods were sold to him on credit. So, see, he has accepted the bills. You are going to transfer the debt from the debtors. In this case, you credit the debtors' account. The debtors that have been debited will not debit the bills receivable account. So, debit bills receivable account and you credit the debtors' account. Debtors' account. After that, debtors' account can also be called receivables. Okay. So, now, the base receivable is an asset. Remember, an asset must have a debit balance. So, since these bills have been accepted, I've told you that there are three options opening to the drawer. That one option is that the drawer may wait to the maturity and collect the face value of the bills. Another option, you might discount the bills with the bank or the discount house. While the third option is that he might endorse the bills to the top party. Now, bills receivable endorsed to the top party now. Where he endorsed it now. Endorsed, bills receivable endorsed. Bills receivables. Endorsed to the third in this case, these bills have been tendered to the top party for payment. The top party, that is, which is the creditor to the supplier, is the person now receiving the bills. So that means that top party becomes the receiver. In that case, you debit the top party's account. Debit the top party, let me say creditor's account. or payables account and you credit no it's not goes out of bills of uh, bills receivables you credit bills receivable account so that is where the bills is endorsed to the third party in settlement another option is that the creditor might decide to discount the bills. Bills receivables, bills receivables, discounted. Where he discounted the bills? That means he agreed to accept a lesser sum in lieu of the face value of the bills. These bills will be tendered. That means if the bills receivables is discounted, this one will not be there. It cannot be endorsed. So, either of the three options I'm about to examine will be applied. So, remember, it's, it still remains as bills receivables here. But where it has been discounted, you are going to transfer it from bills receivable. In that case, you credit the bills receivable, 
you now debit the bank with the amount received. Because money will be received from the bank. The bills has been tendered to the bank. And the bank has paid you. That means you are receiving the money through your bank account. You debit bank. Bank is the receiver debit bank. Because you are receiving the money through your bank account. Debit bank. Account. And credit bills receivable. Account. Debit bank. And credit the bills receivable account. With the value. Value. Of the bills. Now. I've told you that the bank of this kind of house will not pay up to the full value of the bills. There will be a discount on the bill. With the discount charge, or upon the payment of discount, you will not pay discount to the bank. Upon the payment of the discount, you are the your bank account is the one given out now. Given out the discount. Discount is an expenses to you. So you debit discount charge account. Then you credit your bank account. Bank account. The money is going out from your bank account. So your bank is the giver. You credit bank account. So that is where the base receivable has been discounted. The third option, which I'm going to term option C. The third option is to bills receivable will be honored. We wait till the maturity when the bills will be honored. Bills receivables. Bills receivable. Honored by the debtors or receivables. It is honored. It means it is paid on maturity. So in that case, you know, where it is paid on maturity, the first two processes will not be there. It is not discounted. So after the process two, after it has been accepted, so it, the next thing is that it will be paid on maturity. In that case, you debit. So when it is paid, you receive the money. You are receiving the money through your bank account. So you debit bank account bank account and you credit bills receivable receivable account you credit bills receivable account in some cases the debtor may not be able to honor the bills on the majority where the debtor could not pay on majority that bills is said to have been dishonored. And where bills receivable is dishonored now. So number, let me say four now. Bills, bills, bills receivable, dishonored. So instead of the acceptor, instead of the debtor to pay on maturity, he fails to pay. And where the debtor fails to pay the value of the bills of maturity, such bill is said to have been dishonored. So, remember, the debt remains or is left as bills receivable before. So, the money will be transferred from bills receivable and the debt is transferred back to the debtor. In that case, you debit the debtor's account, you debit the debtor's account or receivable's account. Receivables, if I say receivables, I'm talking about trade receivables account, not bills receivable. You debit the debtor's account, then you now credit bills receivable account. But when a bill receivable is dishonored, that the drawer may engage the service of a legal practitioner who protests the bill dishonored. And I've told you that the legal practitioner will charge fee for his own service. That fee is called noting fee. With the noting fee or noting charge, not with the noting fee 
page to with the notice fee paid. So where notice fee is paid, the drawer's bank account money is going out of it. The bank account becomes the giver. So you credit the bank account and you debit the notice fee account. So debit notice fee account. And credit bank account of the drawer. Bank account of the drawer. This notice fee will be borne by the drawee. That means the drawer, that is the seller, will transfer the notice fee to the debtors. Transfer, transferring the Noti fee to the debtor. So when they transfer this notice fee to the debtor, it will go out of the notice fees account. Why the debtors will be the one to bear it. So we debit debtors account, debtors account, that is account receivables or trade receivables account. And you credit notice fee account. Notice fee account. Number four. Where bill is dishonored, the drawer may charge interest or commission to be paid by the drawee. With the commission or interest charge on this on bill dishonored, with the commission or interest charge on bills receivable dishonored. The interest or commission is an income to the agent. In that case, you debit the debtor's account or your account receivables. You debit it. And you credit commission or interest income account. This is the accounting entries needed or necessary in the books of the drawer. Example, Joko Jack commenced business on 1st July 2022. The following records were extracted from his books. 1-7-2022 bought goods on credit from good luck, 20,000 naira. 6-7-2022 sold goods on credit to B. Daniel, 40,000 naira. 8 7 2022. So boost on credit to D more. 50,000 naira. 15 7 2022. Drew B on B Daniel for 40,000 naira. Payable on 31st of October 2022. 16 7 2022. So boost on credit to M Joy. 15,000 naira. And Drew B on him, payable on 31st of October 2022. 17-7-2022, so goes on credit to J. Samuel, 10,000 Naira. And received a B for 10,000 Naira, payable on 31st of October 2022. 27-2022, Drew Bill on D. Moore for 50,000 Naira, payable on 31st of October 2022. On the 20th of July 2022, discounted M Joy B at 5%. On the 21st of July 2022, paid good luck 10,000 naira by check as per payment of the amount owed to him. 22-7-2022 endorsed J. Samuel B of 10,000 Naira to 
good luck in settlement of his balance. 31 10, 2022. B. Daniel's B was duly honored. 31 10, 2022. D. Moss B for 50,000 naira was returned dishonored. Required. Prepare the ledger accounts to record the above transactions in the books of Jokoje. Bank account is not required. Jokoje is the seller, is the owner of the business. The transaction took place in the book of Jokoje, the owner of the business. That is to show that Jokoje will be the drawer. Now, the first transaction, let's have in the ledger, let's have the solution. Solution. In the ledgers of Joko J. The first transaction occurred as our first of July 2022. We have bought goods on credit from Good Luck. Bought me purchase. So this will affect purchases account and it will affect Good Luck. The goods was purchased from Good Luck. That's to show that Good Luck is the giver. It's the one given out the goods. Why purchase is the receiver. So in that case, we debit purchases account and we credit good luck account. Let's have the purchases account. Purchases account. We have the debit side and credit side. So Purchase is the receiver. 1st of July, 2022. Good luck is the giver. We credit good luck. The amount involved is uh, 20,000 Naira. So we now credit good luck account. Debit side and credit side. We have 1st of July 2022. We are crediting good luck account with the amount of 20,000 Naira. Now, back to the question. Uh, on the 6th of July 2022, so goes on credit to B. Daniel. This is our first six account and be Daniel account. So, it was sold to B. Daniel. That's to show that B. Daniel is the receiver. So we debit the B. Daniel account and we credit sales account. Sales is the giver. Sales is the giver. Why B. Daniel is the receiver? So we debit B. Daniel account and credit sales account. Let's have sales account. Sales Account. We credit says that is the date is uh, sixth of July. So we debit be done here. We are crediting this account. The amount involved is uh, forty thousand naira. Credit sales account with 40,000 and we debit B. Daniel account. Let's have B. Daniel account. So we debit B. Daniel. The date is 6th of July 2022. So we debit B. Daniel with 40,000. Now, back to the question. On the 8th of July 2022, we have sold goods on credit to DMO. Goods was sold to DMO. It was first sales account and DMO account. DMO is the receiver. Since it was sold to him, we debit DMO account and we credit sales account. Sales is the giver. So, we debit DMO, we credit sales. 
The date is uh, 8th of July. The credit says account. This is says account. 8th of July 2022. The amount involved is 50,000 naira. We open an account for D more. D more account. So we debit D more. 8th of July 2022. We have sales of 50,000 naira. Back to the question. On the 15th of July, 2022, Drew B on B Daniel for 40,000 Naira, payable on 31st of October, 2022. Draw a bill on B Daniel. Where is B Daniel? B Daniel. This is B Daniel. B Daniel is, is a debtor. Where you draw bill on him? Upon the receipt of the B, and B Daniel accepts the B. Upon the acceptance of the B, it is assumed that that B have discharged the debt of B Daniel. The transaction took place as of the 15th of July. So we credit B Daniel. We now debit B receivable. B receivable. The amount involved is. 40,000 naira. So 40,000. So we now debit B, B's receivable account. Having credited B Daniel account, you will debit B receivable 15 of July 2022. We have B Daniel 40,000 Naira. For every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. Back to the question on the 16th of July, sold goods on credit to M Joy. M Joy is the receiver. So you debit M Joy and you credit says. That credit says the amount involved is 15,000. We credit says and debit M Joy. And says account 16th of July 2022. So M Joy of 15,000 Naira. We now debit M Joy account. M Joy account on the 16th of July 2022 we have six of 15,000 15,000 naira 15,000 naira so you have debited the enjoy and six accounts credited with the same amount back to the question on the same 16th of July and drew bill on him payable on 31st of October 2022. A bill was drawn on Enjoy as at that same date. So in that case, the bills will be assumed to have discharged Enjoy's debt of 15,000. So we have uh, 16th of July 2022. We have bills receivable. 15. Then we debit the bills receivable account. 15th of July 2022. We have M Joy. That is 15,000. On the 17th of July, so goods on credit to J. Samuel. Goods were sold to J. Samuel. J. Samuel is the receiver. We debit J. Samuel account, we credit sales account. So, we credit sales, that is 17th of July. 17th 
of July 2022, J. Samuel, and the amount involved is 10,000 naira. 10,000 naira. So, the credit says and debit J. Samuel. They have J. Samuel account. Date is 17th of July 2022. We have six, and the amount involved is 10,000 naira. Back to the question. I received a B for 10,000 naira payable on 31st of October 2022. A B was drawn the same date on J. Samuel. So that means. That bill will be assumed to have discharged J. Samuel's B. Same date, 17th of July 2022. We have bills receivable. The amount involved is 10,000. You credit J. Samuel account, you now debit B. Receivable account. 17th, 17th of July 2022. We have J. Samuel. The amount involved is 10,000 naira. Back to the question. On the 20th of July 2022, Drew bill on D more for 50,000 payable on 31st of October 2022. A bill was drawn on B more on the, on the 20th of July. So that bill will have be assumed to have discharged B more debt. 20th of July 2022. We have uh, bills receivable. Bills receivable. And the amount is 50,000. So you debit bills receivable account. We have credited cre we have credited D more account. So you debit bills receivable. 20th of July 2022. We have D more and the amount involved is 50,000 naira. Back to the question. On the same 20th of July 2022, discounted enjoy B at 5%. Discounted enjoy B. Enjoy B is 15,000. And when it is discounted, that means the drawer is ready to accept a lesser amount in lieu of the 15,000 error. They want to accept a lesser amount in place of 15,000. So in that case, the, the amount will be paid to the drawer through their bank account. That means the bank account of the drawer is the receiver. We debit the bank account and we credit the bills receivable account. The date it was discounted is 20th of July. 2022. So, we debit bank account and credit B receivables account. The amount of MJOY B is 15,000. So, that means bank account will have been debited. Remember, you were told bank account is not required. So, that is why I'm not going to open the bank account. Then, the discount charge, discounted MJOY bills at 5%. So, with the discount charge on the M joint bills now, when that discount is paid, so you are going to credit the bank account of the drawer. Then you debit the discount charge account. So, let's open discount charge account. Discount charge. Discount charge is an expense. So you debit the discount charge account. So the date is uh, 20th of July. 20th of July 2022. So you debit the discount charge and you credit the bank account. 
the discount rate is 5%. The amount of Enjoy bill, Enjoy bill is 15,000. Enjoy bill, 15,000. 5% 5 of 15,000. 5% 5 of 15,000. That amounted to 750 naira. The discount charge is 750. So that means the bank account of Enjoy will be credited. So bank account is not required. Therefore, that should be ignored. Now, back to the question. After the 20th of July 2022, on the 21st, July 2022, paid good luck, 10,000 by check. Good luck is the receiver. You debit good luck and you credit bank. Bank account is not required. So let's debit good luck. Where is good luck account? This is good luck. The date is 21st. You debit good luck account and credit bank. So the amount paid is 10,000 naira. 10,000 naira. So this 10,000 will be credited to the bank account. So we have debited the good luck account and bank account will be credited as per payment of the amount owed to him. On the 22nd of July, endorse J. Samuel B. of 10,000 to good luck in settlement of his balance. J. Samuel B. which have been included in this receivable. The date is July 22nd. You want to endorse it to the top party. That means it goes out of the business receivables account. So 20... 20, 22nd of July 2022. It goes out of the business receivables account and it enters, I mean, on endorse. Back to the question. Endorse J. Samuel B. of 10,000 to good luck. Good luck becomes the receiver. We debit the good, the good luck account. So we credit J. Samuel. So we credit business receivable. We debit good luck. Good luck. The amount involved is 10,000. Now, we now debit good luck. On the 22nd of July 2022, we have this receivable of 10,000 Naira. On the 31st of October 2022, B. Daniels B. was duly honored. So it was paid on maturity. So when this bill is paid, Jokoje will receive the money through his bank account. That means the bank account of Jokoje is the receiver with debit bank and you credit this receivables account. That is B Daniel's B. The date is 31st of October 2022. B Daniel B. The amount is 40,000. B Daniel. Daniel. So, I mean, you debit the bank account, the amount is 40,000. You credit this receivable and you debit bank account. You were told that bank account is not required. Now, the last item on the 31st of October, D must be for 50,000 was returned dishonored. It was not honored. It was not paid. D more. Amount is 50,000. It was dishonored. So in that case, you remove it from D, a B receivables account. That is, you credit B receivable. 31st of October 2022. Then you credit B receivable. You debit D more. And the amount is 50,000 naira. So you debit D more. 31st of October 2022. So we have B receivable of 50,000. So after all this, you are to required to prepare the ledger accounts to record the above transactions in the books of Yokoje. Bank account is not required. Let's balance the account. So Daniel account, 40,000 on the debit side, cancel the 40,000 on the credit side. D more account, 50,000 plus 50,000, that gives us 100,000. So, and at the credit side, 
if the end of the year is December 31st, so you have 31st December 2012, balance 2022, I mean, balance carried down. If you subtract 50,000 from 100,000, you'll be left with 50,000. The total is 100,000. So, your balance carried down here will be brought down to the first day of the following year, January 1st. January 1st, 2023, balance brought down, which is 50,000. There will be susceptibles account. 40,000 plus 15,000, that is 55,000, plus 10,000, that is 65,000, plus, plus 50,000, that is 115,000. The credit side, 15,000 plus 10,000. That will be 25,000 plus 40,000. That is 65,000. 65 plus 50, that is 115,000. The debit side is total 115,000. And the credit side is also 115,000. So that cancel out. No balance. Then enjoy. 15,000 cancel the 15,000 at the credit side. No difference. This somewhere. 10,000 cancel the 10,000 at the credit side. No different. Purchases you have balance of fifty of twenty thousand. Purchase is twenty thousand. Then good luck. Ten thousand plus ten thousand. That will be twenty thousand. The credit side is twenty thousand. Leaving no no balance. Then sales account. Forty thousand plus fifty thousand. That is ninety. Ninety plus fifteen. That is one hundred five. 105 plus 10,000, that would be 115,000. 115, so you have balance carried down. 31st of December 2022, balance carried down. 115,000. The total is 115,000. This balance will be transferred to trading account. You can put transfer to trading account. Then, a uh, discount account, discount chart, you have 750, which will be recorded as an expense. So, this is the end of my presentation on the topic. My next presentation, I will examine the accounting for bills of exchange in the booths of the drawees, that is, in the booths of the acceptors, transfer washing is account.